kind of odd going on first. Usually I get an opportunity to see if all the other comics are going to suck, and now I just have to hope they all suck after they all suck. <laughs> so I, I made a discovery recently that I found very heartening. They did a study and found that 80% of Americans believe in a personal God. So this means an actual deity that takes an interest in people's day-to-day -day lives. I found that really heartening, personally, because I learned that I am smarter than 80% of America, and that's really good information to have. <laughs> so if we've got any, any Republicans out here, I think Fox News has finally sort of shown their hand, because I was reading an article on their site the other day, and they said, as an expletive, what the Obama was he thinking? And I'm like, really? Is that how the code works now? I mean, I know Republicans hate two things, fucking and black people, but you can't just merge the two. It's not gonna work with, oh, I really obama my wife last night. <laughs> but we all know it's not really the word fuck they're hoping to replace. What they really want to say is, no daughter of mine's gonna marry a filthy Obama. And eventually they might get away with it if we keep letting them slip. So, yeah. So, a famous preacher snake handler died recently. He was, he was on television, and this was in the news. And can anyone guess how he died? Snake. Bitten by a rattlesnake. <laughs> and if you don't know, snake handling is practiced by extreme members of the Pentecostal church which is an offshoot of Protestantism. Unfortunately, no one told this pastor that his snake was a Catholic, so, <laughs> so it didn't end well for him. Ah. I found that for some odd reason, napping is so much better than sleeping. <laughs> and it's odd because anytime you've got something really important going on in your life that you should be addressing, People always give you the same advice. They say, oh, well, just, just don't lose any sleep over it. Are you kidding me? It's when there's something I have to do that I sleep like a baby. The middle of the night when there's not shit going on, that's when I can't get my eyes to shut. But seriously, give me a deadline. It's not really rest until I have slept through a promise and made my child cry. That's when I feel like I can wake up energized. <laughs> I was... I was at the store the other day, and for some reason, the dude ringing me up decided to just get chatty with me. And he's like, you know, I've decided this year, I'm gonna work really hard to become a good Christian. I'm gonna, I'm gonna really focus on being a good person. And, and I was thinking, okay, good Christian, good person. I don't see what these two things have to do with one another. Because if you've ever read your Bible, at different points in history, good Christians, have been kosher with murder, rape, genocide, slavery. And this is what this cat is aspiring to this year. What the fuck did this guy do last year that he has to atone for? I've gotten to a point in my life where I found I've started creating little meaningless goals for myself. Little things that I can accomplish on a day-to-day -day level just to kind of make my days better and make me feel good. But I've been doing it long enough now that somehow those little goals have kind of morphed into life goals. And now every time I accomplish something, you know, I start to feel good about myself because it's an accomplishment. And I have that split second where I don't understand why none of my friends want to complete the high five when I announce I finally made it through all eight police academy movies. <laughs> or I ate every single thing on the Taco Bell menu in one sitting. <laughs> my wife will get home and she'll be like, Nick, have you been on the couch all weekend? What have you accomplished? And I'm like, honey, do you have any idea how many hours of Law & Order I made it through this weekend? <laughs> And I don't even want to watch it. It's made it through at that point, because that was my weekend's goal. I can't, I can't be too harsh on my wife, though, because we don't share a lot of the same interests, but we both do love Law & Order SBU. And I can't really say why, because I hate myself every time I watch that fucking show. I, I really hate myself every time I watch 14 hours of it in a row on Netflix instead of going to the gym or accomplishing any of the real goals in life. But all the episodes go the same, you know? Stabler will knock on some door and a 
nervous looking lady will answer and he'll be like, are you Denise Smith? And she'll be like, oh God, are, are you a homicide detective? And he'll be like, no ma'am, no, I'm not a homicide detective. That's the other show. No, I'm a rape and homicide detective. <laughs> Can you identify these panties as your daughters? No? Well, try and picture them without all the blood and semen on them. <laughs> I really, really hate the term morbidly obese. Not just because it sounds like your fat has got to a point where it's become a danger to you and others, but because there's nothing above it. You know, once you've hit morbidly obese, you're in the fucking club. It doesn't matter how much fatter than you someone is, you guys are now brothers in huge arms. <laughs> and my doctor told me, she said, morbidly obese is a BMI of 40. You're currently at 39. Do you know what that means? And I said, yeah, I'm one burrito away from owning a rascal. That's what that means. <laughs> and I'm really trying to lose weight because I'm afraid of gaining that extra pound. And I know that you know, a normal person loses some weight, their friends congratulate them, everyone's happy. But if I become morbidly obese, I've got to the point that if I actually do accomplish any kind of weight loss, people are going to simply congratulate me. I've become so fat, I might end up on television at that point. <laughs> and thank you, I'm Nicholas Eats, that's my time.